Hello guys, what's up? I am GojiFan1990 and welcome back for another new video for today. Today I'm going to continue on for the next episode of GojiFan98's Gamera-thon. Today I'm going to take a look at the 7th entrance of a, of a Gamera franchise and the 7th chapter of a Showa Gamera series with Gamera vs. Zekra. Which is this is my favorite movie in the Showa Gamera film. Love this film. Everything all about it is just awesome. So... Gamera vs. Zekra was released in Japan of 1971, and it also came out the same year where Godzilla vs. Hedorah comes out. This is way before Godzilla vs. Hedorah came out. So let's talk about his history about this movie of Gamera vs. Zekra. For background, it was the beginning of the first... You see, uh, Gamera vs. Zekra was, all had to, was the beginning of the end of the first cycle of Japanese monster movies. As in that time... Daihai was reported had a bankrupt at the time while, while working on Gamera vs. Zekra at the time. And this movie will be the final appearances to feature American child actors to make an appearance in this film. Yeah. Now here's a little fun trivia about this movie. Supposedly the film had the same 35 million yen budget of Gamera vs. Jigar, but however, however, none of the money is a a pair of it is on screen, some theorize the cooking of the looks. Anyway, there's a fact about Zekra. His design is based off the goblin shark and sh snailfish. That's kind of pretty interesting. The Japan title was also known as Gamma vs. Deep Sea Monster Zekra. And now what we learn from about this movie, it's that, uh... When, he, when the space woman was introduced in the film, that, well, we don't know who she was at first until we found out who she really was, that she's actually a geologist was on the moon, that she was captured by Zekra, had brainwashing her to do his bidding. And we learn Zekra had his vulnerable that he can't stand alive because he's a DC monster. Like a lot of DC creatures, they can't stand alive because it hurts their eye. Zekra was one of my favorite villains of all time, and Gamera's design is essentially the same design from the previous film as we know it. After Gamera vs. Zekra was complete filming, Daiai had a bankrupt and all the Gamera suits and props, and including the monster suits and props, were all destroyed in a fire. Until three years later in 1974, where the company managed to reopen it again, was a new movie under the now be called Kawakawa slash Daiai Studio when the company reopened it. So... And my favorite, one of the funniest moments in the film, when, when Gamera, before he finished that monster Zekra off, he grabbed the rock and hit him in the back, playing, he's like playing ban. Listen to the sound when, if you listen very close to that Gamera beating Zekra with a rock on his back, and it sounds like an instrument. This is a, one of the funniest moments. And this is the only so far to have none of the miniature set building be destroyed in, in this entrance in the series. And this movie was takes place during Sea World. Which is, that's a pretty cool concept. But the Godzilla film will later does have a feature of Sea World only appearance in Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla, which that's probably it. Well, that's all I have to say for Gamera vs. Zekra. Stay tuned to next episode. I will reveal the final entrance of the Showa Gamera series with Gamera the Super Monster from 1980. Stay tuned for that, and I will always stay with your fans and go to your fans 1990 and for more and do more videos in the future. So yeah, so stay with your fans and Gamera fans. Sorry, my friends. Bye!